Hi everybody, uh, in this video I'm going to show you some fun ideas using a flower pot cookie cutter uh, that is part of the spring bundle just to give you some ideas of other things you can use this for during the rest of the year. So let's get started. So in the video I have where I've showed how to actually create these adorable spring baskets, three different variations with the eggs, with the bunny, and with the daffodils. So if you haven't watched that, check that out. But uh, I talk about a spring bundle. So this is a bundle we've put together. Um, so you'll find this on nicholaslodge.com, click on shop, and then actually categories. And the first category is gonna be bundles. And that bundle includes um, this cookie cutter. Uh, now this cookie cutter I designed and was manufactured for us by um, Ann Clark Cookie Cutters. And uh, as I said, it's an adorable cutter and can be used for baskets. And in this particular video, I'm gonna show you how to use this for flower pot topiaries and different ideas, cactuses and other things. Um, so this comes with the bundle. Um, also included is this little elliptical cutter. So this little elliptical cutter is used to make the bows at bunny ears and bunny arms. So I actually show that in the video as well. And then um, this is a Katie Sue basket weave embosser. So this is actually what I use to make the sort of the basket weave. This is also really cute to do like small waffles. You know, you could do like a stack of waffle cake um, as well. Waffle cookies, so it's sort of fun uh, with that. But anyway, so obviously show how to use that. And then we also include um, two handouts in here as well. So this one obviously goes through how to make the uh, the basket here. The little hat cutter is sold separately on our website. So if you just click on the cookie cutters, you'll see the little girl's hat uh, cookie cutter sold separately. But I did that and showed that on the video as well. So you have all the directions there. Um, and then on the back, it's got some um, like directions for making little dogwoods and the cherry blossoms, which I'm going to be showing in a separate video. So check that out as well. And then also how I did um, the little pot of gold. And so this is really the premise and basis for the, the flower pot. Then you can turn this into all sorts of fun things. I've also included um, from CookieCon, this was a topiary made with the same cutter. And uh, this also talks a little bit about how to modify rolled fondant, because when I show you this in a moment, when you make the cookies, I'm gonna use the just straight fondant for the main part of the cookie. But then when I press the paste in the mold here, for the texture detail, I'm going to be using modified fondant. So that's all the recipe is all on here as well. All right, so this has got some sort of lots of information on there for different things. So anyway, so I'm um, just gonna pop these out the way. So I'm going to show you in this video how we're gonna use the, the cutter. And um, so first of all, I'm going to show you with um, like a flower pot terracotta color. So I made this, I used some Renshaw orange um, added a little bit of brown and uh, a little bit to make that sort of terracotta color, okay? So you can use ivory, a little bit of orange, a little bit of brown. You can also buy terracotta gel color as well, all right? I've rolled this out. Um, now on the pasta machine, um, I've actually, um, in the basket one, I did actually number one on the pasta machine. I've made this a little bit thicker because of the rim of that and plus we want it to look a little bit more like a flower pot. So all you would do is once you've rolled that out, um, I've just rolled this out. So this is, you know, a little bit, obviously less than a quarter of an inch thick. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. I'm gonna cut out with the cookie cutter. All right, so remember this is in the spring bundle. And the spring bundle is $16.99 and that includes, as I said, the cutter and the uh, texture mat and all those things. So I'm just gonna pop that away. All right, so this is gonna be your first step. Now you can either use a round cutter or you can use an oval cutter, all right? to basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna cut out the, the top of the pot there. So we're actually just gonna line that up with the top of the pot. So you see how I'm actually gonna use that to make a cut there like so, you see, all right? Now you wanna keep this part because we're gonna use this for a pattern for what you're gonna put on the top. And then you can actually just take the same cutter and with the same cutter, you can just gently press that into there like there. And that's why we don't wanna make this too thin because if you make it too thin, obviously you're gonna cut through there. But see, this then makes the rim of the pot, okay? Okay, now, if you wanted to um, turn this into, uh, for example, you can do this as a basic flower pot. When I did the, for example here, the St. Patrick's Day, the pot of gold, I just did exactly the same in chocolate brown. So of course you could do this in different colors, all right? So you can make your pots in different colors. And of course, you can also, 
when you watch the basket weave one, you could also do this just as a sort of a basket here. So instead of doing a flower pot, you could just use the basket weave in bossa and then just cut that out to make like a sort of a basket. So then of course, you know, you could use that different times of year. So, so that's going to be the first step of that. I'm going to just, uh, now these could be made in advance, so all of these components you can make in advance, but I'm going to make this and I'm going to put this uh, to one side, or you can put it onto your cookie here. And uh, a lot of times when I'm demonstrating, I make um, what I call cookies, which are little faux cookies, and uh, the directions are on the sheet uh, that, will come, uh, that comes with the kit. And uh, so that is basically just fondant. So I just took some of the Renshaw Ivory fondant, a little tiny bit of uh, um, a sort of cream color, gold color in there, and then just uh, cut it out, use spaces, and then I just textured it with the mat. And I do talk a little bit about that in the previous, as I said, the main video before the kit. So that's sort of how you would, the premise of how to do the flower pot. Now, as far as like ways to use this, there are lots of fun things you can do. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you how I do a topiary. All right, so topiary. So I have here Renshaw bright green and Renshaw green, a two to one ratio. So two parts green to one uh, bright green to one part green. So um, you could do like 20 grams of the green and 10 grams of the, of the bright green and 10 grams of the green. And I'm just going to mix this through because I want to have this a little bit marbled. So I'm needing this so you get this sort of a little bit more of a modeled sort of effect, okay? And then we're going to just use a little bit of cornstarch, a little bit of powdered sugar, icing sugar. I'm going to just roll this out. And again, I don't want to make this too thin, okay, because we're going to be texturing this. Okay, just going to roll this out. And I'm just using my rolling pin just to smooth that so I get even texture uh, onto there, okay? So then what I'm going to do is going to take the, um, going to, now if you're going to do this like topiary, what we're going to do here is we're going to just texture this. So I'm just going to texture over the surface of this. So I'm using my little texture mats here. I'm just going to just do this nice sort of heavy texture over the surface. We use this for grass and for different uh, textural details. Okay, and then what we're going to do is going to then just take this and cut this. So of course you could do several of these out of one piece. I'm just showing you here. If you cut a strip, you know, the best thing to do is if you're doing, say, six of these, just cut a long strip. So then what you're going to do is, see, then you actually take the, what you cut off the top, okay? And then, see, then you'll know exactly what size you need to cut that, see? So that makes your little topiary part. I'm just going to then just texture around the edge of that, just to get rid of that cut edge, like so. And then, of course, this paste you can put, if you have this freshly made, you can just put that to one side, okay? And then you just will take this, so this would then um, can be glued onto the top, you see? So that's sort of how you would make a, like a little topiary, all right? So this makes like a little topiary. So, of course, you could also do this for the holidays. You could put little red berries there, so it looks like it's, this is obviously like an English boxwood, but you could make this. You could also cover it with little flowers, look like a gardenia bush. There's lots and lots of things you can do with this. Um, the little texture mats that I've used, you know, these come actually as a set of two. These are called the easy texture mats, and these are what we use to make like little, um, like on shrubs, and you can do little toperies. So like, for example, like the little Christmas tree here that was made using these mats. You can also use, this is great for the holidays. I've used this in my uh, holiday open house to do things like fur trim for Santa's hat, pom-pom snowballs and things like that. So it's a, a great little mat. So you can use like your scraps of paste you have left over. So you can use that just to show you this. Because you could, of course, also do like little small toperies as well, like cupcakes as well. But you just take the little mat like that and you're just going to roll this around. And then you see you have an instant little topiary bush. You can also make this into like a little cone shape. Like that. And you see how that's going to give you that little sort of topiary. All right, and you can use these. And like when I made this little flower pot there, I actually just put that on spaghetti. And then this, this is the little flower pot um, mold. This is actually from the alpha pots, all right? And uh, so this is actually the plain one from the alpha pots, which talks about that on the instructions, um, how to do that, you know, pressing the paste number seven into the mold.
and when you make the double-sided one, all right, so when you actually make the two, the uh, three-dimensional pot, what you actually do there is you would take your paste, so you'd obviously fill the mold up like this, all right, so that would obviously be the um, number seven. You take this out of the mold, you let this dry, and then once you've dried it, you would repeat the process. So then what you do is you refill the mold up with another number seven, and you put a little bit of super bond or some piping gel onto there. So this will be the soft one. So just like I do when I do my, uh, like my Nicholas Lodge co pine cones and things, you press the firm onto the soft. So when you take it out, you really won't have a very, uh, you know, the seam is very minimal, okay? So you're gonna have this, and this would be how you would make the little flower pot. And then of course you can make little pots of uh, toperies. You know, these are really cute for gingerbread houses and all sorts of types of things, all right? But anyway, so those are done with the same, the same texture mats. And these texture mats, um, so come in a set of two, um, and uh, yeah, I've shown these on other YouTube videos as well, but you can actually use them for grass. You can also use them for, um, for example, to uh, if you put plastic wrap cling film over the top of your fondant, you can actually use it to give like almost a leather texture. All right, so, so that's just a very simple um, little cookie, all right, with fondant on there. When I did the, um, the one that's on the directions, I actually added this beautiful sort of detail to it. So I added this sort of almost like a bar relief or bas relief work. And when actually I did that, I used uh, this uh, mold here. Uh, this mold here is a Katie Sue mold, which we have on our website, which is the Rose Medley. And it has uh, three different uh, rose garlands, plus also three individual roses. So you could also use these as well. And of course, um, Kerry Griffiths, who designed this, you know, he has a video on this, but you can of course do this in white and dust it. But here what I've done is I wanted it to, to look like terracotta relief. Now, um, in your uh, handout, which is the second handout that comes in the kit, all right, so in the bundle, um, I've modified some rolled fondant. Now, the rest recipe that's on the sheet there is 60 grams of rolled fondant. So you take 60 grams of rolled fondant and then you add one eighth of a teaspoon of tylose and one eighth of a teaspoon of vegetable shortening. All right. And so what that will do, that will just modify the fondant to firm it up. Because if we took the same fondant I've just used for the veneer here and tried to press that in the mold, it's too soft. All right. So you have to treat it with the tylose. Now, so this is some modified fondant, all right? But also if you're using, so this is just for example, green fondant, so, all right? So if for example, I was gonna use this in a mold, all right? And they only needed a little tiny bit. Another way you can do that is you literally can take the lid off the tylose powder. You can just put the little bit of tylose onto the paste and actually just knead some tylose through the paste. We're not actually scaling this at this point. We're just, and what that will do, it almost will instantly firm up the fondant. You see how it's firmed that up, okay? So if you're only doing like a couple of flower pots, you're not obviously gonna need 60 grams because that's basically two ounces of product. Anyway, so this is modified. So you see how this is a lot firmer than the fondant I used. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take just a little tiny bit of um, vegetable shortening, or you can use my Nicholas Lodge Easy Release, just a little tiny bit on your finger. And I'm just gonna just sort of gently go into the mold and then once you've used the mold and finished with it, just give this a wash with some warm soapy water with a, a little nail brush. And um, so what I'm gonna do here now is I'm just gonna roll this into a sausage. This would be about a number eight on the size guide, but I'm just actually showing you here without the size guide. So just gonna put a little cornstarch onto the paste as well. And then what I do here is I'm just gonna press this into the, into the mold and I'm working from the middle of the mold towards the outside here like this, and then I'm gonna take my little scraper. Now these are again on the website, two of these come in a pack. You're gonna use a sawing action, and with a sawing action, you see how I'm sawing across the paste here. Now you always go from the middle to the outside, middle to the outside, because if I started off here or here, the paste would lift out. So I'm going to just saw the paste like this, all right? You see, because this has been treated with the tylose powder, this is gonna firm this up a little bit. I'm gonna use my little companion tool. So companion tool comes with the filler flower mold. Uh, we also sell it separately and it also is sold with the um, little mini pad, all right? So when you do flowers and things, I use the little mini pad. You'll find that under Flower Pro. So if you click on the Flower Pro items there, and it's gonna, it's gonna flex the mold here just gonna come out of the mold here like that. You see how you'll have this beautiful 
relief work here, all right? And then what I do, um, again, you can just, what I'd suggest you do is leave this to dry for a few minutes, all right? And then once you've dried it, you can just turn it over. I'm gonna use some piping gel. So this is my little needle tip applicator, all right? So it's gonna put just some little dots of piping gel onto there, like so, okay? And then, but if you leave that to dry for a few minutes, it's gonna make it easier to hold that up. And you're just gonna just pop that onto the flower pot here. So you see how you're gonna get this sort of English boxwood looking flower pot. And then um, what I would do is once this is dried a little bit, I just take some chocolate brown dust and I just sort of dust with some dusting powder or an airbrush, just like a little shadow, a little shadow here, just to give that like, sort of like a little bit more like an aged terracotta look. So anyway, so that's just a fun use of, um, of that particular mold, all right? So it just gives you some ideas of some other things. Now, other options you could use, all right, is you can also do, this just gives you some ideas, just a plain pot to do like, for example, like a cactus, all right? So, you know, cactus would be really fun to do for say a summer, summer birthday, uh, pool party, things like that. Um, pinata party, so you could do all sorts of things with this. So flower pot, you've just seen me make. Cactus is just basically, what I did is you just blend this paste all the way through. So it's the two parts, bright green to um, the one part green, all right? You roll this out fairly thick, um, cut it out, and then what I would do is you then just use a, um, your companion tool to make the little ribs on here, all right? The little needles are literally, this is angel hair pasta, Okay, so I just took angel hair pasta and I painted this with white gel color. I popped it in my food dehydrator for a few minutes. And then what I would then do is you just would take the uh, little bits of pasta. All right, and then you just would take those and just push those into the, into the softened fondant. All right, so you could do this. And of course, this part could be made well in advance, like weeks in advance. Um, I just put that in with a little bit of super bond. So I've used some of the super bond, which is the thick glue. This is the part of the easy collection. If you do have any questions about anything I'm showing, you know, just send us an email to customer service at nicholaslodge.com or you can call us at 770-453-9449 or uh, as I said, Facebook message me. And as I said, but obviously if you can't remember what things are called, but this is called super bond, it's very thick glue. And you just would push that into the softened paste, all right? And uh, because the super bond is very thick, it's going to set things uh, nice and strongly. It's not going to come out. Um, it's a lot better than using something like, a, in this case, piping gel, okay? Um, and uh, then the little flower, right? This is, I made a little cactus flower. If you watch my YouTube uh, video of, uh, which I put on the Facebook, Nicholas Lodge, Chef Nicholas Lodge Facebook page, making little mini daffodils. When I made these little mini daffodils here, I made the cactus flower in the same way, but I made them in pink. And then what I did is I just got one little needle here. I can just pop that back in. But um, what you do there is you use uh, pink paste and uh, then you would take the uh, pink paste and then you just would use the little non pareils dragées uh, into the middle, just like I show on the daffodil. And then I actually also did a back part of this. So I did a sort of a separate one where I just cut the trumpet off. So you get almost the how you would make a daisy. So you get like two layers. And uh, so you can see that this would be really adorable. And then if you take this same concept, all right, so if you made the cactus but made it in orange, and then you just met, mark the sort of the, the same markings on there in orange, and then you hollow the top and make a little stem, you have a pumpkin in the pot. But also, as I explained, if you made the bottom part with this cut, with this uh, embosser, you'd have a pumpkin in a basket. So that's really nice for fall, but you could do like an apple, you can do all sorts of different fun things uh, in there, but you could cover this, make all different pots. And when I did the, uh, uh, when I did the St. Patrick's Day one, that was just done with brown and then green. And then I actually used the, um, the Katie Sue uh, mold here. Uh, this mold is the treasure coins. And I actually used that treasure coin. And there's actually with this one here, it's got a very much a Celtic uh, motif on it. So I just pressed a number six ball of yellow gum paste into there several times and painted that with rainbow dust um, edible gold paint. 
and I use just some uh, rainbow candy there for this rainbow over the pot of gold. So it just, you know, gives you ideas for, uh, as I said, cute ideas for different seasons, different holidays. But, you know, this is nice for summertime, for obviously topiary can work anytime during the holidays. You can also use, of course, the, um, and then the pumpkin would be nice in the fall. But this just gives you some little ideas of uh, how you could do this for, as I said, different um, celebrations throughout the year. So I hope you will enjoy having fun making some of these additional cookies using your spring bundle set with this adorable cutter, which is very versatile. Until next time, sweet wishes. See you real soon.